AMD's FSR 1.0 went live on GPU Open in June 22nd of 2021. At the time, I pointed out that even though image quality would not be as good as that of DLSS, it was still certain to overtake DLSS in a year or two. I even went so far as to call DLSS a zombie and said it would be made irrelevant. Ooh, and people disagreed with this quite fervently. Less than a year after FSR 1 was released, here are some stats. Number of FSR supported games? Around 80. Number of DLS supported games? Around 100. More games support DLSS in total, which you'd expect because it had a two-year head start, being released in Feb of 2019. But since July 2021, however, 35 games have been released with or updated to include either FSR or DLSS, or both. Of those, 25 support FSR, 20 support DLSS, 10 support both, 14 of them only support FSR, 10 of them only support DLSS. Adoption of upscaling technology since both were released has seen the development community lean towards FSR for all the reasons I outlined in my first video on this topic. FSR is also being added into emulators and consoles, Steam Deck, and the development kit for the Xbox, further expanding its reach. It has become pervasive and has given new life to some old GPUs, both AMD and NVIDIA, and even Intel integrated. But now we look to the future. As expected, based on AMD's published patents on this, we now have a temporal upgrade to FSR 1 in the app named FSR2. It's been announced as coming soon. The first game supporting it will be Deathloop, and we have some videos and stills of it in action. It does seem to provide a generally softer image, but that's not entirely bad. We can see the aliasing is actually better with FSR2 over native. And interestingly, there's barely any difference between the internal resolutions of 1080 and 1440p. I almost thought there could be a problem with the source images here because they're so close. But then I found this sign in the distance, which is clearer on the 1440p upscaled version. But you'd be hard pressed to differentiate between the two during actual gameplay. Once again, AMD has a solution which is open source, runs on a wide variety of hardware and offers ease and flexibility in implementation. It also looks like it'll be fast. Nvidia's presentation on DLSS 2.0 said they require 1.5 milliseconds at 4K on a 2080 Ti. A bit over 10% of your render budget at 60 frames a second. But if you get twice the frames per second out of that, it's a really good trade-off. In AMD's FSR2 slides, they state a performance cost of 1.1 milliseconds at 4K for the 6800 XT in quality mode, and 1.5 milliseconds for a 6700 XT also at 4K using performance mode, which is a 1080 source image. Assuming the NVIDIA presentation was talking about a 1080 source image, then the 6700 XT and 2080 Ti with an equal 13 teraflops of raw shader compute performance both upscale using their relative upscalers in nearly the same time. However, the RTX card has 544 tensor cores versus the 6700 XT's zero tensor cores. But anyway, the best thing about FSR 1 and now 2 is that these fixed modes are not necessary at all. It can operate in a fully dynamic mode adjusting to scene complexity to reach a frame target, like dynamic resolution scaling but without the same drop in quality. In my opinion, this is how the technology should be implemented. It's better for visuals, consistency and power usage, and big swings in frame times do nothing for your immersion, although they do push up your average frame per second. The concept of modes really only exists because that's how DLSS worked in its initial inception all the way up until 2.1. Fixed modes might make sense in the scope of games with very little variation in scene complexity, but those aren't in the majority. So what can we expect in a year from now? FSR 1 was already close to matching DLSS's number of supported titles without even being a direct competitor. It was a good upscaler, but nobody would argue it could replace DLSS's image quality, so developers really needed to support both. And FSR was easy enough to implement, so many developers did. With FSR 2, there is now a direct competitor to DLSS. Performance is as good, quality is likely very similar here. It's open source, easy to implement, and will work on new PCs, old PCs, consoles, whatever. So if you're a developer with limited resources, what would be going through your brain? Do you want to maintain two code paths, or one? Do you like a black box proprietary library you have no control over? Or an open source solution you can fully understand and do whatever you want with? Do you want a single technology providing a consistent experience to end users and also to your own internal testing? Or do you want mixed experiences? These are obviously rhetorical questions, you know the answers. And eight months after I stated the obvious, we have articles like this from Digital Trends popping up. 
No, DLSS is not obsolete. It's a cutting edge upscaler. It is, however, irrelevant. FSR1 is already overtaking DLSS, so we know where this is going. FSR2 will also have much higher adoption than DLSS. Unreal Engine's TSR is excellent, but it only works in Unreal Engine, so it'll have limited reach. So the only competition in this space going forward is between AMD's FSR and ZSS. DLSS is over, and to help make that point, we have NVIDIA. Having seen the writing on the wall, NVIDIA now wants to co-opt upscaling and have AMD and Intel integrate into their own API framework, allowing them to maintain some level of control. Intel has apparently expressed some interest in getting on board, which may help them as they will struggle to get adoption for their new GPUs. So this is the game plan. Try and convince developers to use their own streamlined SDK, which they will tell them allows them to plug and play any upscaling technology they like. I don't think this solves any real problems, but it's pretty obvious what Nvidia is trying to do. They're not willing to concede, just change tactics. And that only leaves one question. If you watched this far, here's a little bonus. It appears there are hints that Nvidia might be a little bit more open towards embracing the open software community. And I'd say we can thank AMD and Intel for adding some competitive pressure for this.